Hello, I am Nirish Kumar. Today I will try to explain about quantum deep learning. Uh, I am assuming that you have some basic ideas about uh, classical deep learning architectures. You are able to write code for classifier regressor. You are able to predict some sequences by using some traditional deep learning stuff. You have knowledge of gradients uh, and uh, some optimizers, loss function, etc. Basic knowledge. So after that I will explain like what additional data that we require to learn or shift towards the quantum deep learning architecture. Actually what happens, uh, we generally apply classical algorithms, functions or classical thinking thoughts in a classical deep learning architecture. Classical systems are everywhere, applicable everywhere but all the objects that we can see or experience but quantum thinking quantum thoughts quantum applications quantum theories are applicable at a very low stage very small particles like from electrons positrons or smaller than that so it is not in a regular practice and that's why we not feel it like uh, we not feel like we experience something like that. That's why it uh, looks uh, slightly strange things, strange kind of thing. But it is not so. If you go through it, you will find that it is also cool mechanism and uh, very successful these days. Even uh, once we have a proper quantum computation system, then uh, I think it will totally replace the classical deep learning architectures. Because we can achieve a lot of, we can solve a lot of problems in the polynomial time or real time that is not possible through the classical deep learning due to its bit based architecture. So let us go into the details. So in the classical deep learning architecture, we pass the classical data to input layer. Actually input layer contains uh, some one hot encoding, some embeddings, some position encoding for example in transformer etc. and some other information generally be attached with the input data and keep it in, in the input layer. After that, we pass the data from input layer to hidden layer. Actually, hidden layer is the main part or network or architecture part of the deep learning. Here we use CNN, DNN, LSTM, transformer and a lot of different different stuffs and things to prepare our network, deep learning network based on our requirements. And then next is output layer. Output layer actually, it is our prediction layer where we predict the classifiers, classes, we predict the regression value, we predict the sequences, etc. The next is the loss function. The loss function generally we use to identify that uh, how far we are from uh, the actual data or actual values or classes or labels or sequences or regression values. And then it comes optimizer. So when we train the deep classical deep learning architecture, the role of optimizer is to identify that weight or that parameter values so that we can minimize the loss between actual and predicted during the training. And it passes those information to hidden layer and then the entire system works in a loop that we call as a epochs and we continue that epochs until we reach some stopping criteria like loss related stopping criteria like uh, uh, some uh, accuracy related stopping criteria or some other criteria. So this is the classical deep learning architecture. Now come to the quantum deep learning architecture. So quantum deep learning architecture classical data is almost same. After that we pass the data and it comes into the quantum encoding. The quantum encoding means we convert the classical data into the quantum understandable format that is known as qubit. So once we 
transfer the data into the qubit format we pass it through parametrized quantum circuit now one important thing is here we had a loop or network that we pass the entire data but here once we get the data from classical data sources we pass it through some circuit so this is different this is network this is circuit so we pass it through the quantum circuits and we say it like a quantum circuit so we pass it through the quantum circuit circuit so once we do the input pair operations like a quantum encoding by converting data into qubit we pass it through the parameterized quantum circuit and from there we pass it through the output layer output layer is again the parameterized quantum circuit then we apply a loss function the loss function is also different from the classical deep learning's loss function it checks the similarity or differences between the actual value and the predicted value at output layer through the quantum circuit and then we apply the optimizers like gradient descents uh, and uh, like we apply the optimizers like gradient descents here with gradient descent sorry like we apply the optimizers like uh, with gradient descents like uh, adam optimizers um, and endam opt optimizers and lot of different different optimizers are there that you can uh, watch in my other uh, classical deep learning tutorials so here here the gradient operation is again not similar exactly similar to the gradient operation that we apply in the classical deep learning here we use some shift operations to achieve the gradients and there are lot of similar kind of uh, functionalities achieve, are there in the quantum deep learning to achieve the gradient kind of thing and then we have some optimizers also Uh, like uh, we had adam and other things in the quantum deep learning we apply those optimizers and then with gradients and identify those the parameter values and weights and passes it through the parameterized quantum circuit to update their weight so that it can generate some output and we continue the cycle until we reach some stopping criteria so this is the different difference with respect to classical deep learning so now from this entire uh, discussions you have assumed that after classical data everything is different process is almost same they follow the same process but uh, the way is different so to understand the quantum way to achieve the same classical deep learning system we have to go through these things like basics like quantum entanglement what is quantum entanglement quantum superposition you we have to understand qubit how it is different from bit that we use in classical deep learning quantum circuits how it is different from traditional network that we use in the classical deep learning architecture 